welcome a very good evening and welcome to you all we are going to start with the next video of ours, right this is part 5 and we'll be taking some of the important discussions ahead okay so let's begin with okay we'll be uh, yesterday we have discussed about rational numbers and in one of the slide I discussed about the decimal expressions so regarding that there are theorems I will be explaining all these theorems very very clearly uh, first let us go for reading out the statement of the theorem then we will uh, explain you in detail a rational number x equal to p by q where p and q are integers with q not equal to 0 will have terminating decimal expression if the denominator q is of the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n where m and n are both whole numbers and this result is true in the opposite direction also converse also i'll be explaining you all these things so let us uh, just see uh, what will be the actual meaning of this particular theorem so first of all one thing you should note is that that is not mentioned here that this p by q should be in the lowest form i mean uh, what i would like to say is that this number should be in the lowest form means x that is the rational number should be in the standard form so by standard form we mean the reduced form of the number that means there should not be any factor common to them after that only we will check whether the denominator can be expressed as this particular form this particular form it implies that denominator should have only two or five or maybe both as factors no other factors then only this type of numbers will have terminating decimal expression terminating decimal expression meaning i already have taken examples i just again would like to go back like 10 by 4 will have terminating decimal expression because this is uh, 2.5 that means the division finishes after certain steps whereas non-terminating is this that if you go on dividing it will never come to an end right so we are categorizing these numbers with the help of this theorem and conversely meaning is that if you have a terminating decimal expression any anything it would be say randomly i have taken this so if someone asks you that you express because it is a rational number if it is a rational number you can always express this in the form of p by q then very definitely q will be containing 2 or 5 or maybe both as prime factor of this there will be absolutely no other factors when you keep this in the standard form that's the converse one okay so this is a very important theorem and then related to this the another important theorem is that if by chance in the reduced form right you do not have this in this form it is not in this form not in this form ka matlab hai the meaning of this not in this form means there will be factors which are other than 2 and 5 prime factors like there may be 3 or maybe 7 or anything which is other than 2 and 5 which is also not cancelled when you reduce this so in that case the decimal expression will be non-terminating non-terminating means it will go on forever and repeating repeating means a group of digits or maybe a single digit will be repeated for example i uh, wrote about this 10 by 3 you can see the digits which is repeating it is only three so we can write this as three three and then there is a bar here right so this uh, this things already you got in class nine so i think you will not face any problem in identifying all this 
So let us move ahead to uh, pause the slides or videos and then just see whether you can recall the things or not. Next, we will start with the question immediately because this is not a big uh, chapter or I must not say that this is a big topic. Question number one, write down which of the following have terminating decimal expression without dividing it. Without dividing it means actual division, right? We used to take uh, the bracket like this and then we put the the first one I am talking about 23 you are dividing by 25 and then you will try to identify what is the quotient will it be terminating or not right so we are not talking about dividing like this so without that you have to speak about its decimal expression whether it is terminating or non terminating or what type of it is right so now just see one by one I am taking 23 by 25 there is no factor in common so already it is in the reduced form. Now look at the denominator only, right? Here I am writing as a answer. Here 25 is the denominator. That if you factorize will be 5 square. Now 5 square can be written as 2 to the power 0 into 5 to the power 2. So now can you say that this is in the form in the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n. Yes, it is in the form. So what the theorem says? This theorem says that this by 25 has terminating, terminating decimal expression. Decimal expression, right? So I did not write the complete statement. I have I have written like this equal signs, which are not in fact actually valid. So you should write like this. I will once tell you the statement, listen to it, and uh, make a copy of the question with your own handwriting. That will be much more good and better. Like here, 25 is equal to 5 square. Equal to write. It is okay. Fine. Then you write which is in the form, do not write equal, which is in the form this, where m and n are whole numbers. Therefore, right, therefore, this has terminating decimal expression. So, like this, this much only will be enough, right. Similarly, you see the other problem. In the other problem, number 2, 72 divided, uh, sorry, 33 divided by 72. Can you find some factors common? Yes, there is a 3 common, right? So, your first task is to cut the 3, that is cancel the 3 and then you reduce this into the standard form. By 3, if I divide it, it will be 24, right? So, now 24 should be broken in its factorization. So, 2 cube into 3 to the power 1. So, what do you say about decimal expression? Think. Is it in the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n? Absolutely not. Right? Absolutely not. So, what will be your conclusion? 24 equal to this, which is not in the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n, where m n and whole numbers. Therefore, this number is not having terminating decimal expression. Rather, you will say that it will have non-terminating but repeating decimal expression. Okay, think a while and then you make a note of the question. Next, you come to the number uh, 3, third one. 21 by already they have this time uh, done the factorization. So, that is a good thing here. Okay, apparently if you look at the question directly, you will find a 7 here. So, do not be in hurry to conclude that it will not have terminating, right? Because theorem says that there should not be any other factor, prime factor other than 2 or 5. But here we have seen 7. But one more thing you should remember that the number should be in the lowest form. So, now very clearly this 7 can be cancelled here and you can write 3. So, ultimately your reduced number will be 3 divided by 2 to the power 5 into 5 square. So, this will definitely have 
terminating the single expression, right? And in the other case, this 7 cannot be cancelled here. So, here it is non terminating, but repeating, right? Non terminating, but repeating. Okay, uh, please listen. This non terminating I have written as NT, these are not standard semi, right? So, in explanation, I am writing exam, you do not use this, please. Come to the next. Find the decimal expression of the following rational number without actually dividing it. Okay, in the previous problem, we asked for the uh, conclusion only whether it will be repeating or non repeating, right? Terminating or non terminating. But here, they are asking you the decimal expression, those which are possible, right, to divide and getting terminating decimal expression. Right. For non-terminating, you will not be able to write the answer without dividing, but here we can write it if it is terminating decimal, right? So, those which are terminating, we have to write their decimal expansion without actually dividing. Let's see how do we do it. 21 by 27, first of all, you see your uh, first duty is to check whether it is in the standard form or not. If not, you cancel it the factor which is common you can sell first. So, by 7, uh, 3 I can divide this 7, this is 9, 7 by 9. So, 7 by 3 square, what do you say? Is it in the form, is the denominator in the form 2 to the power m 5 to the power n? No. So, it cannot have terminating. So, in this case I do not have to do anything because they are asking you to write the decimal expression without dividing if it is terminating. Okay, let's see the next 23 by 125. Already it is in the standard form, right? This can be written as 5 cube. So, what do you say? What do you expect? Its expression will be finite or it will go indefinitely. It will be finite, right? Because denominator is of the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n. Of course, 2 is not present means power of 2 will be 2 to the power 0. Now, once you confirm that this is not going to have indefinite decimal expression or like non-terminating decimal expression, you try to complete the group of 2 and 5 in the denominator and that is going to give you the decimal expression without division, right? So, just you see how many 5's are there, 3 5's, how many 2's, 0 2's. So, to complete the group, I need how many extra 2's I have to infuse here, 3, right? Now, to balance the whole equation, you have to write that 2 cube there also, so that this can be cut and you are actually in this particular fraction only. Now, moment you complete the group, that generates you 10 cube. And numerator you simplify, this is 8 and then 23 into 8, right? 8 is 24, 2 is 16, 16 plus 2, 18, 184. Once you arrive at this, next step is very easy because when you divide by 10, always one decimal is, uh, is to be put from the right side. One plus you have to leave. If you divide by 100, that is 10 squared, two decimal places from right. If you divide by 3, three decimal places. So, in that way, your result is this. Am I clear to you? Am I clear to you? Yes. Now look at this problem. Look at this problem. It is already in the factorized form, so your task will be less. 2 and 5 already there. You don't have to bother about this. Now, you see, uh, can I have the reduced form of this number? Because 
I can see very clearly that this number is divisible by 9 and this 3 square means 9 so first of all you remove this 9 right if I divide this by 9 what will I get 9 6 are 27 54 right 9 6 are 54 so I get 36 divided by 2 to the power 4 and 5 cube okay now do one more thing because now in order to get in order to get the decimal expression it is terminating now it is very sure i have to complete the pair so accordingly i have to multiply this by 5 right i have to make it 5 to the power 4 because 2 to the power 4 is there but just try to see once that it is uh, useless to multiply this by 5 because one of the two you can cancel here so as to balance the power automatically you need not do any kind of other division sorry this will not be 36 it will be half of that 18 so next step what will you write 18 divided by 10 cube now as i told you 10 cube means you are dividing by 1000 so how many decimals should be skipped from the right side it should be 3 because there will be 3 zero so it is point uh, 0 0.1 sorry uh, 0 0.018 please uh, verify this what about this here also you can find that this is divisible by 3 so you cut the factor but unfortunately denominator will still be having a 3 that means denominator is not of the form denominator is not of the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power m only it has other factors so it will not have terminating decimal and therefore we will not go for expressing it in the decimal form okay next which of the following are rational numbers and what can you conclude about the denominator of them okay Rational numbers always have two type of decimal expansion. Please remember that. Either it is terminating, that means division finishes, or if it doesn't finish, it will be repeating. That means a certain digit or maybe a certain group of digit will repeat right forever. So now just see the characteristics and accordingly you will conclude. Question number one. In 1, what is the decimal expansion of the number? 3.14. Very nice. 3.14. I know that when I wrote, uh, I'm knowing probably when you wrote 3.14, you are directly thinking about pi. But do not think, please do not think. This is just to create a confusion in your mind that I'm talking about pi. But I'm not talking about pi. I'm talking about 3.14. Now just look at the number and define the character of this. What type of character it has? Is it terminating? Yes, it is terminating, right? So it is right, which is terminating. If it is terminating, it is very, very sure that it is rational number, right? And what can I say about the denominator? We know denominator, what can I say? Denominator is of the form. Denominator is of the form what? 2 to the power m into 5 to the power. Am I clear to you? I hope. Secondly, exactly similar logic you want put because even if it is 3.1417, forget about that, but it is terminating, it is finished. So it has the symbol, uh, sorry, it has a denominator of this one. What about this? What does this bar say is on 1.7? Uh, it says that this number, if I try to expand, I have to write like this, repeating 1.7 forever. That means this is a non-terminating decimal expansion but repeating decimal expansion. Non-terminating but repeating. Okay. In that case also it is rational. Right? Rational. But 
as this is non terminating and repeating denominator what can you say it is not of the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n right please write this in your own words it is very simple to write you simply can write as the decimal expansion is non terminating but repeating the number is a rational number and therefore uh, sorry rational number with denominator not of the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n where m and are whole numbers that's all what about this okay this is again to make you confused this is again to make you confused uh, that it is uh, whatever number it is rational very obviously it is finished right any number may be very big seems to be very big in its decimal expansion forget about that but if it finishes undoubtedly it is terminating decimal expansion and it will definitely have a denominator of this one right what about this it is having dot 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 now there is a real question you see the pattern now one six one double six one triple six it means that i'll be having one then four six then one five six yes i can predict what will come next but the repetition is not uniform meaning a particular group is not repeated here i know that there will be six sixes or five sixes or maybe seven sixes after one i know that but it is not fixed like here it is one seven one seven one seven always but here one will repeat six will be one increased it is not uniform so it is not a rational number be very very alert it is not a rational number it is an irrational number and therefore we cease to speak anything about its denominators right because it is not possible to express them in the form of p by q now i apologize here actually uh, i should have written i should have written a bar here there should have been a bar here in this three sixes right i wanted to create a confusion here with this problem anyway that's not a problem bar means this particular six will be repeated sorry uh, not here uh, keeping one into this so this one six 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 this group will be repeated without any repeat uh, without any problem the same group that indicates that it is a what type of number it is a number which is non terminating but repeating so it will be a rational number with denominator not of the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n please take little time pausing the video and note it then you proceed for the next part next question next question prove that n into n plus 1 is always divisible by 2 for any positive integer right i'm uh, choosing a very small problem it will be of two marks if it comes in the board or any other exams so i'll be doing in that logic only so prove that this is always divisible by 2 for any positive integer n just let me try to ask you a simple question answer it to yourself when do you uh, confirm that a number is divisible by 2 yes you can confirm once you confirm that the number is even and when a number is even when it is divisible by 2 that is 2 is a common factor uh, 2 is a factor of the prime factor right so these are the vice versa cases you have to remember i am going to use that please a very uh, simple fact but very powerful in proving this right so they have told that it is n is a n be a positive integer they have given even right given also integer positive integer okay then n and n plus 1 are consecutive will they be consecutive consecutive means lagatar next to each other so in this case if n is odd this will be even and if n is even this will be odd because 
if you consider any two positive consecutive positive integers one will be definitely odd another will be definitely even so there is no doubt about that and you need not prove anything for this so i can directly conclude here therefore one of n and n plus 1 right must be even 1 of n and n plus 1 must be even therefore what do you say about the product must be even hence proof if it is even it is divisible by 2 did you get did you comprehend the explanation because two numbers are consecutive integers so one will be definitely even and when you multiply a even number with any other number the result will be always even right any other number means please make sure i am talking in the context of positive integers so do not bring here please the fractions right so here we can get the product as even and once the product is even i can now conclude that it is always divisible by that's a two marks question. Come to the three. Prove that one and one it is not n one and only one out of n n plus two and n plus four is divisible by three. And n is a positive integer. One n only one. Meaning is that once you say that n is divisible by three, that means the other two should not be divisible by three. So that you have to prove. Now this is a long question. It is a four marks. So here, because they are talking about divisibility by three, we will start with Euclid's algorithm, where we will consider the division divisor by three. Divisor as three. Okay. So let us write the initial statement. Let n be a positive integer. Positive integer. Then n must be of the form. Must be of the form. See, I'm not writing about the divisor right now here. Directly, I'm writing now. Three q, three q plus one, or three q plus two. Q being any integer so see here if you feel you need to explain it you can explain because earlier in the videos i have explained how once we consider divisor 3 the numbers will be of this kind to save the time i did not do but in actual practice in answering you should so now how i have to say this particular part case one supposing that in the first case n is of the form 3q then n if you consider 3q there are three numbers out of that which will be divisible by 3 obviously n therefore n equal to 3 is 3q is divisible by divisible by 3 Achha, does it imply that these other two are not divisible i have to show that they are not divisible but it is not implying so far so in case one still two cases are left out two parts that is now i have to talk about n plus 2 also if i write n plus 2 then n will be replaced by 3q now just tell me is it divisible by 3 no way because remainder is 2 so i write not divisible by 3 what about sorry there is a less of space what about n plus 4 in this case? It is 3q plus 4, which we can write as 3q plus 3 plus 1, then 3 whole into q plus 1 plus 1, then 3m plus 1. Now just tell n plus 4, is it divisible by 3? Again, no way because I mean there will be 1. So just observe now case 1. In case 1, out of the three type you have only considered n to be of this form then 
out of n n plus 2 and n plus 4 which is divisible this one in this case so you have so far discussed only one pattern one of the following now case 2 will be there case 2 n will be of what form 3 q plus 1 now is n divisible by 3 no remainder is 1 so you write n is not divisible by 3 so now obviously either of the two will be divided so now let us find n plus 2 n plus 2 will be what 3 q plus uh, 1 plus 2 that gives you 3 q plus 3 now this is 3 q plus 1 so what will you apply imply is it divisible by 3 yes what about n plus 4 it will be giving directly i'm writing it will be giving you 3 q plus 5 right 3 q plus 5 can be written as ultimately 3 m plus 2 will it be divisible no so when you consider n to be of this form which particular number out of this is divisible? n plus 2. Rest 2 are not divisible. We have done second. Now the third is left. That is false. In third also you will find that out of n, n plus 2 and n plus 4, exactly 1 will be divisible. Exactly 1 will be divisible. Right? And then overall after doing all the three cases, what will be your conclusion? You will say that out of n, n plus 2, and n plus 4 exactly 1 will be divisible by whom 3 okay that's an important question please make a note of it and try to solve it come to the next prove that product of three consecutive integers is always divisible by 3 is always divisible by 3 so now if you consider uh, this I will be leaving in terms of things because I am sure you will be able to add your answer. I will explain the mathematical part. You will write let this right be the three consecutive integers, positive integers, right? Please make it very clear positive integers. <coughs> Now you have to show that these product, their product, n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 will be divisible by 3. Right? This will be divisible by 3. So as they are talking about the divisibility by 3, so what division I should consider? Yes? Yes, this 3. Correct. So uh, just you tell, these are the three numbers, I will consider this one. What will be the form of n then? It will be 3q, maybe 3q plus 1 or 3q plus 2. These are the possible options for the positive integer. Right? Now, again, like the previous case, there will be three cases. Case 1. If you consider n equal to 3q, then what will be the product this way? The same way you have to talk about the product, right? So, if you write this value here, very obviously you can see that this 3 can be easily separated. So, this is out of form 3. But look, what do you say? This is divisible by 3. Am I clear to you? Fine. This is case 1. Case 2. In the similar way, case 2 you do. Case 2, what will you consider? N equal to 3q plus 1. Then, what will be the product? Because this time also it should be divisible. Right. So n it is 3q plus 1, then 3q plus 2. Next will be obviously 3q plus 3. So I take that common now only. So overall, what will write? 3q plus 1, then 3q plus 2 into q plus 1. So this is again on the form 3 to be 3m. Will now this be divisible by 3 if n is equal to this one? Yes. Then again, sorry again, that I will be leaving the third word for you. Right? If n will be of this form, 
you find again you will find structure 3 here which will confirm that it is divisible by it is divisible by 3 okay just uh, have a look and see whether it will be possible or not okay take a little time check and listen okay now we'll go for the next one see uh, previous problem and this problem very little difference is there this time also consecutive integers but this time six they are talking about so if you want a hassle free problem to be answered you consider the divisor as three but it is not suggested a divisor as six sorry but it is not suggested you consider the divisor as three then it will be more logical how i am telling you right uh, starting point will be remaining the remaining as the previous one only because your this product you have to talk about that it is divisible by six so n will be first what form see i am not explaining the beginning part because it will be same as the previous one only if n equal to 3q what will be this form it will be 3q then 3q plus 1 3q plus 2 now out of this it is very clear that factor 3 is obtained right now if somehow i can say that from here there is a two possible factor or this contains a two as a factor then the whole number will be divisible by two and two three that means six will form now can you confirm whether this will contain a factor two yes that you observe right you observe <coughs> are these two number consecutive 3q plus 1 and 3q plus 2 yes because 3q plus 1 with that if you add 1 then you will get this now try to go back to the logic just in few uh, two three question back we have done one that if there are two consecutive integers one will be odd other will be definitely even which one is odd which one is even i need not bother about that now it is very clear that out of these two one is odd, another is even. So that even will contain a factor 2. This is 3. So what I can write? The whole number is divisible by 6. That means this whole thing will be of the form 6. Again, I am telling you that I did not write the complete statement for the logic or logical expression. I have explained it. Note it from your side by giving your own words. This is one. Secondly, how will you verify for the other case like 3q plus 1? Then what will happen? What will be the product? 3q plus 1, then 3q plus 2, and then 3 into q plus 1. Again, the same logic, right? 3 will be from here, and these are consecutive. Is that clear? Then if you write 3q plus 2, 3q plus 2, if you write, it will be, I think, again in the same form. How will you do? You just see. Just you see, uh, from here you will be getting 3. I am bringing that part first. Now, here it is. Of the form 3q plus 2. And last one is 3q plus Four. It is three q plus two, and then this is ultimately I can make it as three m plus one. Now three is here. Again, the same question is coming. Can I get a two from here? Three q plus two. Now it has been reduced. I made it three m plus one. So out of that one will be even one will be odd is it possible yes it is possible yes it is possible even if they are not consecutive they are not consecutive of course but even then it is possible why you see 
लॉजिक क्यों होता है यू आर एडिंग टू हियर टू ए मल्टीपल ऑफ टू राइट टू ए मल्टीपल ऑफ टू फाइन ओके आई मे नॉट राइट लाइक दिस यू कैन वर्क विथ दिस ओनली what will happen what will happen if it is a number if it is a number which is not divisible by say 2 that means q will be odd so if q will be odd this whole thing will be odd right whole thing will be odd so odd and this 2 again it will be odd number So you take an example to identify. Suppose three I put nine plus two eleven. Okay, then with that eleven, if you try to talk about three cube plus four, what will you? What will I get if I put three? Uh, sorry, uh, Q equal to three here. Nine plus six thirteen. Thirteen. No, it is not even. It is not giving you even number. So six two I have to generate. Oh right, sorry. If it is odd, if Q is odd, observe that this whole both the numbers will be odd. Q is odd will imply from here that this Q plus one is even. So two will be coming from here. This is a tricky part. You listen very carefully and try to do it. If Q is even uh, odd, then Q plus one will be even, and two will be coming from here, and we will get in the form of six into m that you have to explain. Suppose suppose that this is not odd. This is even. This Q is even. If this Q is even, if this Q is even, this whole number will be even. This will be also even. so there is no question that there will be a two factor right so this has to be explained very carefully this is a tricky problem it is a important problem from exam point of view now just you see the modified version of the problem we can ask you like this uh, previous problem ke sath relate kar sakte hain that if n is any positive integer so that so that n cube minus n is divisible by 3 or maybe we are saying it to be divisible by 6 both are valid okay so today with this we will finish and i'll be uh, doing some extra problem from real number afterwards but next video will be on polynomial and in between i'll be uploading um, assignments i'll be giving you the link but the assignments will be uploaded Uh, in my blog i have a blog i'll uh, write the name of the blog here you please see that blog also follow that the blog name is y o u n g y o u n g young mathematic dot blog spot right young y o u n g young mathematic dot blogspot dot com please see this you'll be already finding some of the assignments which i uploaded in the previous years but for you i'll be uploading fresh assignments also okay so thank you so much